Hey, what's going on guys? This is Docker Crash Course for Beginners. Okay, let's see what you will learn in this course. You will know all about Docker, images, containers, Docker files, Docker Hub, and more. You will also learn about Docker commands. And if you have never touched Docker before, we will go through Docker setup first. And lastly, we will have a closer look to what Docker can do by Dockerizing a simple Python Hello World program and also by dockerizing and running a Django application from a Docker container. And we will do everything step by step, so don't worry. So, what is Docker really? Practically speaking, it's just a way to package software so it can run on any hardware. Now, in order to understand how that process actually works, there are three things you must be aware of. Docker file, Docker image, and Docker container. A Docker file is just a blueprint for building a Docker image. A Docker image is a template for running Docker containers. And a Docker container is just a running process for the Docker image. So let me explain that in simple words. Um, let's for the sake of clarity have a real life developer's problem and see how we can solve this problem with Docker and understand why Docker was created in the first place. Imagine the following situation. You are a developer, okay? This is you. And you're developing a new product in your company using Flask, for example. You finish the job and locally on your machine, this software or this app is working perfectly. Then you want to deploy that on the server. But then you discover that there are some dependencies or requirements are missing and we need to have a server that is running the same version of Flask and that has also installed these dependencies. So the app works perfectly on your computer or on your local machine but if someone else like other users for example try to run um, that software or that app it will crash because there are a lot of dependencies and requirements for that software to work are missing. For example, you discovered that there are other users, that they have other rules that use these dependencies differently. And in conclusion, everything starts to get messy. And then you start to fix these problems um, on your machine. And you see what's going on now. It's not uh, web development anymore. It's more of settings and configuration and setup for other users. And after you do that, you think that you did the job. You launch the app and it's working fine, but no. Very often, you will have a new release of this app with a lot of updates, you have specified the requirements um, or these dependencies, for example, not only you, but other developers. And again, you will have the same problem that this app works on that system, but not the other. Um, so you will repeat the same process to modify the settings and so on. Because there is no unique interface on all computers to run the software in a unique way, which is the environment you have created it in. And the question now is how much time did you cost your company in terms of money, time and resources? You see what I mean? And the whole point of Docker is to solve problems like this by reproducing environments. You as a developer who created this application can define the environment with something called Docker file. And I will talk about Docker file um, later and I will show you a practical example with that. But as we saw, Docker file creates Docker image and Docker image generates Docker container, which can run on the server perfectly. And then every user can um, see exactly what you have created, no matter how different their operating system is or the dependencies installed on their uh, computers are, it doesn't matter. So every developer now can rebuild the environment, which is saved on this Docker image and by the way, the Docker image is um, unchangeable. It's a read only file. Okay. No one, um, no user actually can alter uh, the Docker image or change in the code. If the idea of Docker is not clear to you yet, you can think of Docker as a logistics system in uh, cargo shipping and more specifically maritime or sea cargo shipping services. You have a big ship that can deliver cargoes. And these cargoes are all different in shape, size, and form. Some of these cargoes are delivering fruits, others are delivering laptops, and third cargoes delivering cotton, for example. 
So here we have a question. How we can organize and arrange the shipping of different products on one ship? Because you can't put laptops on vegetables or fruits, for example. And here they came up with the idea of containers. So let's have containers with fixed size and a unique interface, which means how to hold the containers, how to lift it up, how to move it, how to open it and close it, for example. And inside we will save what we want to save, veggies, fruits, timbers, cotton, whatever. And we will deliver these products in these containers very easily. Docker works exactly the same. The Docker engineers thought of the logistics system and containers idea as a way of implementing their approach of delivering software. So Docker takes your software, put it in a container, and um, in this container we will put also some necessary dependencies, um, other files which compose the convenient environment for uh, that software to work properly. So Docker uses a unique launching mechanism for all containers. So you can have a program written in C, another program written in Python, another one in Node, um, different operating systems, different database systems, it doesn't matter. Everything is isolated in these containers and shipped on one layer or on one ship and delivering these containers or these packed and isolated software to all the users. To conclude, Docker is a mean of packaging, delivery, and launching software. The last thing that I would like to mention about Docker image is that all the images that are created are saved on Docker registry on your computer, on your local machine. Um, but there are ready-made images uh, for you to pull and to use. Um, they actually live on a place called Docker Hub. So other users and developers can use commands like docker push and docker pull of the required images. It's more like GitHub for repos. Now, in my opinion, the best approach to learn Docker is to use it. And to use it, you will need to install it. And I highly recommend to install the Docker desktop application. It installs everything that you need for the command line and also gives you the GUI where you can inspect your containers. Once installed, you should have access to Docker from command line. So let's go ahead and install Docker. All right, so let's go ahead and open docker.com. And you will have to, um, to sign in to register to have an account on Docker, exactly the same like you would do with GitHub. So uh, let's sign in. So here my uh, Docker ID is backbrace password. So you see here immediately that you have repositories like in GitHub. Okay. Uh, this is my account. Okay. Uh, access the world's largest library of container images. You get all the images um, that are already created by other users and get pushed in um, the Docker Hub repository. Right. So uh, hub.docker.com. Okay, and to install the desktop or the Docker desktop, um, just get started with desktop. You have to download it, so you will download Docker desktop for Windows. Um, it's the same thing with uh, with Mac. So if you're working on Windows or Mac, uh, I really recommend that you install that. So uh, you'll click next, next, next. It's really easy, and once it's installed, you should have the system, and it looks something like this. Okay, so you will have the images and the containers, all right? And also you will have access to the command line interface. So if you will open your, um, your shell or your command prompt and let's type Docker version to check out your Docker version, okay? So get client Docker engine, community, version 20.10.2 go version because docker is written in go language okay server right also you can um, just type docker and this will give you the different commands that you can use so you get options okay um, d4 debug for example 
host list, you have management commands and you have commands. Right? Attach, build, commit, CP, create, and so on. Um, RM to remove stuff, um, restart to restart the container, push, pull, PS to list all the containers, uh, image, and others. Okay. All right. And to check out your installation works correctly, go ahead and run the following command. You'll type docker run hello world. So immediately he sees that unable to find image hello world latest locally. So what it does, it goes to docker hub and pulls it from docker hub from library hello world. Pull complete. Okay. And there you go. Hello from Docker. This message shows that your installation appears to be working correctly. So it shows you now that Docker takes different steps in order to generate this message. The Docker client contacted Docker daemon and the Docker daemon pulled the hello world image from Docker hub. Then Docker daemon created a new container from that image, which runs the executable that produces what, what we're seeing here. And finally, the Docker daemon streamed that output to the Docker client, which sent it to your terminal. So let's try other thing. For example, let's say Docker run IT, which is uh, the interactive mode. So it can be run in, in the background, Ubuntu bash. So we will interact with um, Ubuntu, which is Linux distro. All right, so now we are inside uh, Ubuntu. Okay, so we'll say ls, lsl. Okay, you can run all of um, Ubuntu's commands here. So Ubuntu is working virtually. All right, and let's exit. Okay, you can also run Docker info. And we're going to work with uh, terminal a lot. You need to get used to this. So the app's name is called Docker app, Docker incorporated, um, the kernel version, the operating system, Docker desktop, OS type uh, is working on Linux, the type of architecture. Okay. All right. So let me actually close um, the command prompt for now. And let me create a folder and we'll call it main app, for example. And let me create a Python um, file here, so main.py. And let me just have um, a program which prints a statement. Let's say hello Docker. Okay. It's just a simple program that prints on the screen the message hello Docker. And let's go to the integrated terminal. And it will work the same if you will open uh, from bash or your command prompt, doesn't matter. Uh, it will do exactly the same thing. So we want to check out the images. Remember that the image is just a snapshot from your source code, which is immutable or unchangeable. So if you'll type Docker images, these are the current um, Docker images that I have locally on my Docker registry. And this was the last one that um, we did now. Hello world. If you will type Docker PS to display the list of open containers, we have nothing because we don't have any running containers. Let's try to create a Docker image from this hello Docker program. And there is a command called Docker build. So type Docker followed by command build. Following that is a parameter. In this case, minus T or dash T which stands for a tag, because we will need to give the image a tag name. And let's call it hello dash Docker. All right. And then the path where exists your source code. In this case, uh, just a dot, which means our current directory. All right. And let's hit enter. Okay, so it started well, it started to build, but then it failed. Why it failed? Because it failed to read Docker file. Recall that in the slides, we said that in order to have an image, 
we need to have a Docker file, which we don't have in our current directory. And Docker tried to locate that file, but it didn't find it actually. It could not read it. So let's go ahead and create our Docker file. To do that, simply create um, the file called Docker file, like that, all right, enter. And really, it doesn't matter. You can write it. Um, you can write it with a small letter, Docker file, not necessary um, with D capital. It will work fine, right? Okay. So let's see what we can have in our Docker file. The first thing that I want, I want to say from and the name of the language. And as this file is written in Python, I will type Python. I will precise that this is Python 3. Notice here that it's underlined. So if you will click on Python, you will click open, you will have Python image, which you can easily pull um, that Python image on your computer and work with it. Okay. So this is the Python image, Docker official images. Okay. So this is the first thing. Next, I want to create a directory. So for that, you will say run, following that a subcommand called make dir to create that directory. And the directory that I want to create is going to be in user, source, and app. And after we have created this directory, we want to uh, specify the working directory. So it will be exactly the same work dir. You see here the work dir path, which is exactly the same. All right, then we want to copy from the current directory, which is a dot and to the same location. Okay, user source app. The last thing I want a command to execute that file. Normally, when we execute a Python file, we say Python uh, main.py or run.py or whatever the name of the file.py. We will do the same thing. And you see here that this is executable. So Python and main.py. So when Docker will run that, um, it will go through the, the ninth line and it will execute Python main.py and hence run the file or run the program. Okay, so let's repeat what we did. So we'll say docker build tag flag and we'll give it the name of main and the current directory and we will hit enter. And here it didn't have any problems because it found the Docker file. And notice that here, a uh, first step is from Docker library Python three. Okay. It executed this. Okay. Then uh, we have created a directory user source app. Then the work directory will be the same. Then we have copied to the path. So usually copy is followed by two arguments from to, and that's it naming to docker io library main now if we will try to docker images we will see that in the repository we have added the main image okay 39 seconds ago and it has a size of 885 megabytes all right now let's go ahead and run the container um, be careful if you will say docker ps to check out the containers we have nothing. And to run a Docker container, you will type Docker run and the name of the application, which is main. And when you will hit enter, you will get hello Docker. So this is displayed from the container. Let me show you very quickly our uh, GUI interface. You see here image in use. And this is the container. You see here that it's displayed in the container. Hello, Docker. All right. Um, the same result, whether in the in the command prompt or in the container itself inside Docker GUI. 
And remember when we said that um, an image can have different containers. So for instance, if we will delete that, we can create another one. We can create hundreds of containers, it doesn't matter. So let me show you if we want to delete that image, that main image, how we can do that in the shell. Well, it's pretty obvious in um, the GUI, you can just click here and remove. But even in that, it won't work because it's in use. So if you will make remove, it won't work, okay? Because the container actually is uh, still running. So in order to stop this, you need to just delete it, all right? But we won't delete it from here. I will show you how to do it from there. Okay, so let's say again, Docker images. All right, we still have our main image. And by the way, if you will make Docker PS to see the running containers, you won't find anything. Although we had a container, but it worked and stopped. It just displayed the message or printed the message, hello Docker, and it stopped. In order to display all the containers that even were working and stopped, you say Docker PS um, dash A. It's a flag for all, display all. And you have here main, we had hello world and Ubuntu. All right. All these containers were working and stopped. Now to delete an image from our table, you simply say Docker image, because we want to delete an image, followed by a subcommand called RM for remove. And here you can remove in a couple of ways, either by using the image ID or by the repository's name. So if you will type main, it's the same as if you will type the image ID. So we'll take that copy and paste here and hit enter. And there it is, untagged, main latest, deleted. Okay, it's deleted. Now, if you will see um, Docker images again, you'll find that main has been um, removed from the table. These are very important commands to know and memorize. Docker images, PS, uh, how to remove an image, how to remove a container, how to run, how to build. Uh, also, we'll see Docker Compose when we will work with our Django project. Okay, so without further ado, let's create a Django project. All right, Compose and Django. Let's go ahead and create a folder. We'll call it Django. Django Docker project. Okay, it's a long name, but just to describe what we're doing. And I'm going to open that with VS Code. All right, so the first thing we need to do now is to create a Docker file. So let's create Docker file. Then we will say from Python, like we did in the other example. And here we will see together new things that we didn't see in, other, uh, in the other example. For instance, we will have the environment. We need to define the environment. And here the environment for Python is called Python unbuffered. And we will set it to one or to true. The next thing that I want is the work directory, which will be equal to just slash code, creating a path or a folder called code. Then we want to copy from requirements.txt, which is essentially the dependencies, okay, that your Django project will need. And we want to copy from requirements.txt to the code folder. And we will run this by pip install reading mode requirements.txt then at last we will copy everything from the current directory to the code folder all right and let's go ahead now and create requirements.txt so i'm defining here the django version that i want to install as a dependency and less than 4.0 Okay, perfect. So now we have saved requirements and closed it. 
Now let's go ahead and create another important file and we will call that file docker-compose.yaml. This file describes the services that make your app, okay? So in this example, we have two types of services, web server and database. And the compose file describes which Docker images these services use and how they linking together. Just for the sake of time, I'll just copy that and I will paste it in Docker Compose. So you can see here we have two types of services, database and web. Database is, um, the image is from Postgres, so we'll, um, Docker will go to Docker Hub and will pull the Postgres image and install it. Environment, Postgres DB equal to Postgres, Postgres user equal to Postgres, and the password is Postgres. And if you have worked with Django before, you know that Django works with SQLite database. So when we will create our project, we will need to uh, change in the settings file. We'll need to change from SQLite to Postgres in order to be compatible. Then we have the web build from the current directory command pythonmanage.py run server um, four times zero eight thousand, which is the local host ports this means that the local port should be set to um, the public one and this depends on db which is set here all right now let's go ahead and create a project usually in django you would do django admin start project followed by the name of the project here we will do it differently in docker so you will need to type docker dash compose run web then django admin followed by start project command and the name of the project. So we will say simply Django project followed by dot, which means I want to compose this project in the current directory. All right, so it's building from Python, you see it goes line by line um, in the Docker file when we have set from Python 3, we have set the environment, 3 on 6 working directory code, copying the requirements, then installing the requirements, All right? Installing Django. Successfully installed Django. Okay, then copy everything to code successfully built and this is the um, the image id all right image for service web was built because it did not already exist to rebuild this image you must use docker compose build or docker compose up dash dash build we will see that later all right okay perfect now if we will do uh, what's inside um, our django docker project we will find that we have successfully created the Django proj, uh, project. We still have the docker compose.yaml, the docker file, requirements.txt, and manage.py. Okay, so we have our Django project. And let's go ahead and change uh, in the settings. We will need to change the database. And later we'll need to add um, the name of the application in installed apps after we, we, um, after we will create it. Then we have the database. This needs to be changed, all right? So also for the sake of time, I will copy it and I will replace with uh, the Postgres, host DB, uh, the port is 5432. The engine is uh, backends.postgresql, okay? And now we have a compatible system between um, the settings.py and the docker compose.yaml. All right, let's close that, let's close that. And let's get back to our terminal. Now let's go ahead and run our application from Docker. So we will run the docker compose up command and we will hit enter. Okay. 
So we have got an error loading Psycho PG2 module, no module named Psycho PG2. So we will need to add in our requirements the Psycho PG2 module. So let's exit Docker. Okay, stopping Django. All right. And let's go to requirements and add the Psycho PG2 module. So Psycho PG2 binary version 2.8 plus. Okay, let's save that and let's docker compose build in order to update what we have done. Okay. Every time you make some changes, you need to update that in order to be reflected in the docker image. All right, so collecting and downloading Psycho PG2. And once that done, we will actually try to um, run again the server from Docker. So uh, let's say Docker compose up to run the project inside Docker. Okay, looks fine. Okay, perfect. So starting development server at um, four zeros, 8000, which is the local host. Let's go ahead and click on that. Let's open. And we have our server is working perfectly. Okay, so it's listening on port 8000. And this is running from Docker. This is not running locally from a machine. Okay, so let's close that and Let's uh, hit Control C just to stop the server. So the last thing that I want to do in this course is to create an app for the project. And to do that is very similar to what we did to create the project. So docker dash compose um, run web. Then we want from Python manage.py start app and the name of the app. Let's say I love Docker. And here you don't have to make dot, just hit enter and it will be created in, um, in the directory. All right, perfect. So we have I love Docker created. So let's go ahead and make some modifications. First of all, I would like to create templates and in templates, I will create index.html. Okay. And I will just paste that. It's just simple boilerplate with two tags. I love Docker. I'm also Piscus. All right. Um, just nothing fancy, really. And I want to go to views and I want to create um, index function. And it takes a request. All right. And what it does, it returns um, render and the request and the file is called index.html. Okay. All right. So this is views also in uh, also here. I would like to create your else.py and from Django.urls, I want to import um, the path. And from current directory, I want to import the views and the patterns, URL patterns, okay, views.index, okay. So um, the path is uh, when it's empty path or just a slash, I want to go to views and um, just trigger the index function, all right. Now in the Django project itself, I would like to add that app in installed apps. All right, so come here, we'll add I underscore love underscore Docker. And also in uh, URLs, I want to add uh, the path, which is empty string. It goes to I underscore love Docker. 
dot urls all right okay nice and i want also to import include okay now in order to update we will use um, the command docker compose build to update but as we want to run the application from docker after updating i can use a shortcut for that so i'll say docker compose up dash dash build so it finished building it checked for any changes successfully built and it gave us this image uh, this image id all right okay perfect so uh, looks okay let's go ahead now and open the browser to check out the local host for our program which is working from docker let's go ahead to localhost port 8000 and we have i love docker i am piscus so we have successfully created a django project and we have created also an app and this app is running from docker all right guys so this is the end of this crash course i hope it was useful to you i didn't cover everything in docker because docker is very big but i promise in the future projects i will um, include docker as part of the process so to give you more practical view on how to use docker in um, real life applications if you will okay so uh, once again thank you very much guys for watching and uh, if you have any questions please let me know in the comments and i will leave the code in the description section below and i will see you in the next crash courses